So welcome everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening on what is quite a cold Thursday uh, Thursday night. So um, we're really excited to have you all joining us for Plus A City of Canning Sprint Pitch Night tonight. So tonight you're going to hear from seven um, really interesting, really diverse local businesses that have been working through the Sprint program to test, to validate, to iterate, um, and hopefully to, to commercialize their idea. So it's going to be a fun interactive session. Uh, we're going to hear from each of our seven founders and there's going to be lots of opportunity for, uh, for conversation and interaction amongst the group as well. So my name is Nate Stirk. I'm the uh, managing director of a local company called Skills of Odd Age. I'm very fortunate uh, to be the facilitator of the Plus 8 program. Um, so I think this may be the eighth time we've run this program, the second time we've run it with City of Canning. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program, uh, what the teams have been working through uh, um, over the last six weeks, um, firstly, and then we're going to get into the pitches and we're going to run for about an hour or just over an hour. Uh, so um, today is going to be super fast paced. The teams are only going to have three minutes to pitch their ideas. Um, we'll hear a video uh, pitch from each of our teams and then you as the audience will have opportunity to interact with our founders through a Q&A uh, style um, interaction. So um, what I ask you to do as you're listening to the pitches, if you could please put in uh, any of the questions that you have into the chat in Zoom. Um, if you haven't done that before um, on your video panel, you should see a little chat button. If you could put any questions in there, then I'll pull them out as we go through um, the Q&A sections and I'll ask you to come on ask that question and we'll have an opportunity for um, our founders to respond and um, before we start i'd also like to acknowledge the wadjak people of the Noongar nation the the land that i'm meeting on today some of you may be um, regional or maybe even outside of wa and i'd like to pay my respects to their elders past present and emerging i'd also like to acknowledge uh, the city of canning team so joy, joy and boris particularly um, they've done a fantastic job in providing a series of business uh, mentoring support available uh, in the city of Canning region. So for those that are in that catchment, um, you'll see a list there on their website of a whole bunch of programs uh, that you can apply for if you've got a business idea or you've got an existing business that you want to commercialize. So um, thank you to Joy and Boris um, that have been really great supporters um, of this program. Uh, from this now in the second year running, um, I'm really exciting to, excited to partner with the City of Canning team um, in helping local businesses explore new ideas to innovate um, and to generate new jobs and new value for the community. So in that vein, I'm going to play a short video from the Mayor of, um, of Canning. So hopefully you should be able to see this. Can you see now the video screen? Thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Mayor Patrick Hall. Welcome to the City of Canning Plus 8 Sprint Virtual Pitch Night. The seven local businesses we will hear from tonight have been part of the Plus 8 Sprint Business Mentoring Program over the past eight weeks. And tonight they're going to pitch their businesses to us. We'll hear from Dim Sum Australia, Empower to Free, Millennium X, Shop Local First, Tailored Electrical Contractors, Thimble Studio and Wooden Form. They're a great representation of Canning's diverse economy and community. We have tradies, online businesses, foodies, creatives and professionals. A warm welcome also to our partner Space Cubed and facilitator Skills of the Modern Age. We couldn't do this without you. I've been a business owner myself, so I know that running a business is a constant learning process and can also be a lonely time. And that's why it's so important to have the help of a mentor. The Canning Business Mentoring Program has been running now for four years. This year, it looked a little different with activities delivered online instead of in person. Kudos to the Plus 8 Sprint participants who have risen to the challenge and given up their valuable time. I hope they've all gotten something out of this program to better prepare them for their business journey ahead. I'm really looking forward to watching their businesses grow and contribute to the Canning community. We're an economic powerhouse. Good luck with your pitches tonight, everyone. Well done. Wasn't that nice? And I think that, that sentiment there that, you know, it's all about community, that it is a tough journey as, a, as an entrepreneurship is something that I'd like you to keep in your, um, in the back of your mind as you listen to our pitches tonight. So tonight is, is with the purpose of sharing and celebrating the progress that these teams have made. Um, and so um, with your questions, I really ask you to, to kind of um, keep that, um, that mindset um, top of mind. 
So for those that are not familiar with PlusAid, PlusAid uh, is a program that's backed by SpaceCube, which is West Australia's premier co-working innovation hub. So we're very fortunate to work with uh, SpaceCube. And today we have um, Isabel Goldfarb, who's the programs manager for SpaceCube, as well as Holly, um, who's one of the coordinators for the programs team. So um, the brains behind uh, behind the PlusAid program is SpaceCube. And if you ever get a chance to go into their space in, in the city, I, I strongly recommend you take the opportunity. So the plus eight uh, program draws its name from this idea of the plus eight time zone. The fact that in WA or in Perth, we share 24% um, share of the world's population. And so we have this really unique opportunity to explore new innovations to solve big problems that can impact a large group of people. And tonight you're gonna to hear from founders and from business owners that are tackling local problems, as well as potentially global problems and global opportunities. The reason why Plus8 uh, was started was this idea of helping early stage entrepreneurs explore, test and iterate on ideas. So for those that are not part of or, or um, have not uh, done much work with startups before, there's actually a really um, great and thriving community of, of uh, startups and community helping um, people grow and think about new ideas. Part of the Plus8 program is this accelerator program. So uh, each year, uh, Plus8 takes between eight and 15 startups and provides seed funding um, to those businesses. And so tonight, the teams that are pitching, one team will, get a, will be selected to actually pitch for this accelerator and pitch for some of this seed funding. Uh, we're now in our fourth year of the accelerator program. Um, and in the previous years, uh, the businesses you see on the screen here have raised um, almost in excess of $50 million, sorry, valued um, almost in excess of $50 million. Um, and so I suspect that in the coming, uh, coming years, you'll see some of these become household names. The journey that our teams have been on over the last six weeks has been a tough and intense one. And I'm sure for those that have friends and family uh, on the call tonight, you would have heard um, how hard these uh, these founders have been working over the last six weeks. So through the program, we've met weekly for um, for three hours, and then each uh, session we've covered a specific topic related to thinking or growing their business. Um, and so you see there on the screen, um, what we've covered is really the core um, ideas or frameworks to think about exploring and rapidly growing um, growing their businesses. So tonight, uh, it is a bit of a competition because we do have a couple of judges who are going to be asking some questions as well as selecting, uh, selecting uh, two teams uh, to potentially pitch for two programs. So we have Amanda Walker uh, on the call tonight. So hi, Amanda. Amanda was um, a really great founder that came out of the City of Canning Class 8 Sprint last year. So welcome, Amanda. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from, you, uh, from you tonight. And as I said, we also have Isabel Goldfarb who's uh, the Space Cube Programs Manager. So Amanda and Isabel are going to be looking at the teams tonight. They're going to be selecting two teams um, to be fast-tracked uh, for um, two potential programs, one being the Seed Funded Accelerator Program um, and the other being uh, a women's uh, a program called the SBE Accelerating Women's Lead Business, which is a fantastic opportunity for um, some of our female founders. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get into it. So as I mentioned before, the format of the event uh, is going to be a three minute video pitch from our founders, followed by one or two minute Q&A. So what I ask both uh, when you ask your question is to be really succinct and the founders, if you can also be really succinct um, in your answers as well, you're only going to have kind of one or two minutes to respond to a couple of questions. And uh, we are going to have a break about halfway through and an opportunity to meet um, some of our founders and to meet one another as well. So, without further ado, we're very lucky to have uh, Dim Sum Australia up first. Now, um, Peter and the team have done a fantastic job the, through the program. We're really excited um, to share with you their progress and their vision. So, uh, it's always tough to go first, but please welcome um, Peter and team. Hi, everyone. I'm Peter Dean. We are Dim Sum Australia. We believe Dim Sum is for everyone. But before we go any further, as this is a family business, I feel it's important to meet the team who have been driving our business since inception almost two years ago. Here Beck me, the chairman and the CEO. And here's Lindia, our head chef and production manager. Matthias, our MD. And lastly, but not leastly, Mary, who also handles the marketing and our important social media needs. Greatest advertising is word of mouth, so this area is critical to our success. 
Our team have combined traditional tasty Southeast Asian flavours and Chinese recipes to develop our halal dim sum range, which includes vegetarian, vegan and gluten-free options. We produce and distribute our freshly made and snap frozen halal dim sum products from a commercial kitchen in Jandicott. We supply our very tasty dim sum to local consumers, hotel and restaurants and mine sites. All of our products are cooked and snap frozen and are easily reheated through steaming or frying. You can even throw the odd one in the microwave like I do. There are several reasons which differentiate us from the day-to-day -day dim sum producer. Our products are 100% West Australian made. We provide vegetarian, vegan and gluten-free options. We source only the best and freshest local produce. We work with the wholesale customers to produce nice products. A certain Peruvian restaurant in Perth is a testament to that. And we are the only commercial halal dim sum manufacturer in Western Australia and one of very few in Australia. We have HACCP accreditation and halal certification, which means we have procedures in place to ensure food handling safety. Behind the scenes, Lindy works with our senior crew. Yes, our youngest worker is in our late fifties, developing and testing new products for both local and wholesale customers. We produced a variety of steamed and fried halal dim sum, dim sum products as shown here. Don't just listen to us. Here's what some of our customers are putting on social media. But I must share this particular clip. <laughs> How is it? Good. Yeah, is it delicious? To me, that says it all. Whoops, not sure how that one got in there, but we did produce halal chicken feet. Don't forget to keep in touch with us through our website, via email, or through social media, via Facebook and Instagram. Thank you all for watching and listening, and we hope to see you through one of the above media very, very soon. Cheers for now. You're mute, sorry. So well, well done, Peter and team. Sorry, uh, sorry about. It. If I can get you guys to come off mute for me, please. Yep, right. And remembering, um, there was sorry. I should have confirmed a third judge there as well. The Joy Nicholson from uh, City of Canning. So apologies, Joy. You definitely are still a judge. Uh, there was just a bit of miscommunication. I didn't think you were joining us this evening. So um, we do have Joy, um, who's the lead of the BD team for City of Canning. So if you have uh, a question, I want you to pop it in the chat for Zoom. Um, I've got a first question for Peter and team um, from Isabel, one of our judges. So who is your competition and how do you compete? The competition basically is... Uh is uh, for the halal side of things is the imported uh, products which is, which aren't chicken based they can't do that so um but there are a very very few other uh producers um and so that the competition is um, overseas is stiff as far as price goes but uh, our uh, product uh, and taste are far better Nice, thank you, Peter. And there's one from uh, Gemma Green here, who's the Innovation Manager for City of Canning. So welcome, Gemma, thanks for joining us. Uh, Gemma's question is, how do you cater differently for commercial and direct-to-consumer stream, uh, streams or direct-to-customer streams? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a very, very good question, actually, because <clears throat> commercially, obviously, you're, you're looking at, um, at, uh, at big numbers, big numbers, and that type of thing but you're also looking at uh, still being quite uh, niche with the, uh, with the wholesale customers. Uh, whereas local, uh, we have a range and uh, a quite a good range. And uh, we, uh, we're, we're managing uh, deliveries is probably one of our, one of our issues, but uh, the rest of it's um, fairly straightforward. Thanks, Peter. And a follow on question from Joy. So despite having no or few local competitors, are you concerned about new entrants to the market? What are your plans to deal with this? Um, well, it's not, not so much we haven't got uh, 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 competitors. There are definitely competitors out there. 
and uh, our plans are basically to uh, just to keep doing what we're doing better better um, or as good as if not better and ensure that uh, ensure that we're, we're ahead of the pack uh, it's simple as that Thank you. And your final question is, what's the ambition? So do you have ambition to be a global company? Um, what's your expense? What's your plans for global expansion? Um, at this point in time, uh, we're, uh, we're, we are operating throughout Australia with, uh, with a, uh, a risk sized customer in Melbourne. And I think we'll grow our, uh, grow the company to, um, to uh, distribute throughout Australia. Um, globally, well, that's uh, that's another uh, another question. Uh, our uh, our cousins operating out of uh, out of Malaysia might have uh, might have a few uh, issues with us uh, starting to do that. Thank you. Nice big round of applause for Team Dim Sum Australia. Well done. Always tough going first. And congrats to Mary for that very professional video as well. I think you've uh, you've uh, set a high bar there as we've talked about. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to hear from our next founder now. So um, we're very lucky to have Cynthia from Empower to Free. So I'm going to be sharing again. And we're going to hear from Cynthia. And just remember to put your comments in uh, in the chat there as you listen. Hi, everyone. I'm Cynthia from Empower to Free. And I'm here today to talk to you about money and the relationship our children have with it. First, I'd like you to meet Sally and Sarah. Sally is confident in managing money. She is in control and knows she can deal with the unexpected. Sally has completed the Empower to Free program. Imagine if Sally had not done the program. She will be like Sarah. Sarah is stressed out and overwhelmed by her bills and debts. She feels helpless, anxious, and at times depressed. She's really lost and fearful of the future. Sarah is not alone in feeling this way. 35% of Australians fear that dealing with money is stressful and overwhelming. 20% of our 15-year-olds have failed the baseline proficiency for financial literacy. And 42% of our 24-year-olds and under have personal debts. They are also four times more likely than their parents to borrow from the credit cards. Simply put, our children are not prepared to make confident and informed decisions about money. And this is why Empower to Free exists. We teach the critical life skill of managing money. Our curriculum adopts a structured framework around the various topics of money. We first help Sarah to understand her personality using self-awareness as the foundation. She's then introduced to cash and compounding, which shows how her actions today impact her future. Sarah then progresses through other topics like income, expenditure, and other concepts like debts, insurance, and investments. A typical workshop involves teaching, playing, and reflecting. This forms a loop for Sarah to clarify her knowledge, reinforce skills, and self-evaluate. Now back to Sarah. Sarah has considered other options other than Empower to Free. However, they didn't meet her four key criteria completely. Empower to Free provides impartial and professional training at an affordable pricing, which meets her current needs. Most importantly, Sarah likes that Empower to Free is helping to build her independence. The company currently has two revenue streams, delivering their workshops and selling their games online. The team is made up of May and Cynthia, who has diverse experience across a broad spectrum of expertise, from education to finance, teaching to facilitation. Locally, we are now forming partnerships to scale our reach to educators and students. Our program is validated in other countries like Singapore. Lives are changed through our workshops. Jeannie is one such example. She came into our workshop uncertain and hesitant. When she left, she wrote us this note. Not only is she now taking charge of her future, she has even started teaching her parents what to do. Like many others who have gone through our program, she has transformed into a confident and happy young adult. If this makes sense to you, please support us. Would you introduce us to any youth organisations that you know of? I'm Cynthia and my contact details are on the slide. You can make a difference. You can transform a life. Thank you. Well done to Cynthia and team. Nice work. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming off mute there, Cynthia. So we have a question from Leon. Have you had any validation? What kind of validation do you currently have? 
Sure. So we have validated our program in Singapore where we've delivered the program with the Singapore government's funding. We know that teaching money through social emotional context does work. Locally in Western Australia, we have spoken to youth workers, parents, as well as teenagers. And consistently what we hear is, I wish I had that in school. So we know we're on the right track. The next step to our validation is uh, testing out our content and delivery methodology. Thank you, Cynthia. Question for you, what are the options for revenue streams post COVID-19? Sure, so with COVID-19, what we have done is we have looked at developing uh, remote learning packs where parents can actually buy our curriculum and teach the children at home themselves. We have talked to parents and they have said that that's something they want to explore. Separately from that, we've also looked at delivering our workshops online versus doing it phys uh, physically. S separate from that, we've also started developing more games that we could kind of sell and allow for parents to play with their children. Thanks, Cynthia. And Zachary has a question. I know I, the ATA has a program called Tax Super and You. What makes you different to them? What's your unique differentiator? Sure. So with the ATO program, they focus on tax and superannuation, where else for us, we focus on a structured curriculum where we first tackle the personality of each individual, getting them to understand their self before teaching them the financial know-how, which not only just covers uh, super and tax, but also debts, insurance, investments, and everything related to finance. Uh, and another point I'll add is that for ATO, their curriculum is very self-directed. For us, we actually in include the element of social learning. So there's peer-to-peer -peer learning when the teenagers learn with us. Thanks, Cynthia. And just one final question yeah. from one of our judges, Amanda. Sure. Um, so is this your own program or something you've created or is it a, an existing program that you're licensing and taking to WA? Yeah, so this is actually our own created program. I've done this since many years ago and I've tried it from just teaching pure content and realizing that it doesn't work to tweaking it to today's uh, methodology, which includes social emotional context and also brain hacks. Yeah. Well done. Big round of applause for Cynthia. Thank you. Uh, nice work. Awesome. And you've got some lovely feedback there from Leanne. Well done. Love this Thank concept. You. Really great idea. Thank you for that, Leanne. All right. So uh, moving on next up, our third founder this evening, is Tafetswa from um, Millennium X. So please welcome Tafetswa. Hello, my name is Tafad I'm 19 years old and this is me. I created the name Millennium X back in 2018 because I find that finding the right piece of clothing or a website for all your clothing needs is often like a treasure hunt and X is where the treasure is. So Millennium X is a treasure. The inspiration for this was my growing love of fashion and wanting to help people but also this quote because I just don't really want to be bossed around, you know. But I developed a good sense of style growing up and the clothes I wanted to wear were sometimes too expensive. They weren't in my size. They didn't have designers that built that made clothes for my culture. Or the quality was just bad. So this urged me to do more research and I found that many people had the same problems. And upon further research, I also found that a lot of designers also struggled with getting customers or selling their products due to their location or because of their price. So I made this website so I can bring together customers who struggle to find clothing due to their size, location, budget, cultural or religious preferences by linking them up with designers who match their preferences. It's also for designers who want to find customers. So the website was originally meant to be an app but making apps can be expensive and difficult. So I went ahead and made it into a website, which was a lot easier and cheaper. So the website basically has a lot of things on it. The main thing I want to talk about is the pricing plan. Basically, you can be a customer and pay $10 a month so you can get promotion for your, for your products. And basically that's it. There's also a fashion forum on there where you say, where you discuss everything fashion it's basically a safe space for everything you want to talk about about fashion your struggles even finding other designers or customers in the future there will be something called the discussion room it sounds cheesy and corny i know but it honestly sounds really good i would go there if i were you basically it's a virtual place where designers and other designers can link up or designers and customers can link up and just talk virtually online and talk about the struggles that they go through and allow for each other to see the different perspectives 
of each other's lives and how and talk about how designers could make their business better and how clients could find better designers or make the lives of designers easier it'll be virtual eventually they may be able to talk in person but at the meantime it's virtual it allows for people to share their thoughts and opinions on things and basically it's free as well so yeah click on the website bye well done Tefetswa nice work thank you all right so do we have questions coming in the chat one from Gemma have you uncovered any local designers that would be interested in joining your website um two at the moment I'm still looking for more but I've had to tell me that they want to that they're interested thanks and Isabel, one of our other judges has a question for you. What is your competition? So what substitutes or what other um, businesses are, are solving the same problem, Tafetswa? Um, A lot of the uh, competition that I looked up for my business, they have, um, they can, they like show you where you can find the clothing that you want, but they don't really have anything for the designers as well. So. I also offer like a platform for the designers. Great, thank you. And we also have one final question from Joy, uh, which she says she loves the delivery, but the revenue, revenue stream seems light. So what other plans do you have in mind um, to make the business sustainable or commercial? Oh, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> I think us, I would promote on YouTube and Instagram because people often go on there to promote their things. So, yeah, I'm still thinking right. about it. And actually, there is one final question from Amanda. Have you been a finalist for any awards? And she says in brackets, I was sitting next to you at a pretty big award. Make sure you let people know. So here's your opportunity to drop. I didn't know this, Taffet. So you obviously haven't done a good, very good job of so promoting yourself through the... Uh, the program what, what award did you win um so in 2018 i was a sorry sorry i was a fan i won the people's choice award for just started but i couldn't really go on because i had already graduated so i just won this which is it so that was the award we look forward to you doing big things in the future. Well done, Tabitha. So a big round of applause. Nice work. All right. So moving on, we have our final pitch for the first bracket before we're going to have a little bit of interaction. So next up, we have Sally and Robin from Shop Local First. Sally, all of these people want to know why we're here. Okay, let's just tell them. We're here to share the vision of Shop Local First. We're on a mission to strengthen our community by connecting consumers with local producers of goods and services. We believe that we all deserve to live in thriving communities and that we should all be able to make a living through work that enriches us spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Robin, that sounds like a yoga studio. Well, but, yeah. But seriously, we believe that we can do that in part by shrinking the supply chain between local producers and consumers. And we want to make that shift in shopping behaviour easier and more joyful. So how will we do that? Well, through Shop Local Forest, we will put local producers and service providers front and centre in WA consumers' minds. Mm. So let's put some faces to the why. Take Robin Jean. She's the founder of Robin's Eco Cleaning. If you could hear the passion she has for her products, you'd want to bottle it yourself. And Olga from Studio Thimbles, whose passion for sewing is helping other people discover their hidden talents. Mary Francoise of Treetop Farms understands the challenges of local producers. When her family's egg operation started, they were one of 114. Now they're one of 14. 
Each of these local providers faces two big challenges, being found in a crowded marketplace and being able to achieve a viable income. So what are we gonna to do to address these challenges? Well, we'll help local producers get wider exposure to consumers and allow them to cut out some of their intermediate costs. We know just a small shift will make a difference. If each WA family shifted only $85 a month to purchasing goods and services from local producers, the result would be a billion dollar shift over a year. But we also know that life gets in the way sometimes with shopping local. In the interviews we ran with consumers, one word kept coming up and that was convenience. Price, sometimes, but convenience always. So our platforms will make it convenient to, well, shop local. And we want to be Google for people looking to find supplies. And the Tinder for creating the relationships between producers and consumers but we don't want one night stands. We want these relationships to last. Yes, and we want to bring producers and, and service providers to life. Our platforms will differ and that from other online directories and that each supplier will be able to tell their own stories, the why, through a short video, and we'll provide a tailored package of vendor support. So how are we gonna pay for this? We'll be honest, we're still working on that, but it's going to be a combination of vendor fees, joining fees, a percentage of sales that are made through the site, and scholarships and sponsorships. This is a big ask and a big project, and we need your help. So please drop by our Facebook page or send us an email and let us know your thoughts. But most of all, please Sh shop, shop local first. Well done, nice work. I love the unison at the end. <laughs> All right, let's see what questions uh, we have. <clears throat> Competitors. All right. Competitors. All right. Thanks, Joy, for that. Um, there are a few sites who are doing this in specific areas, like handicrafts. Um, and there are a few oh, sites okay. like um, Facebook Marketplace, where you could say type in tomatoes. But you'll get everything from your local IGA to a vendor to somebody else. So we haven't found anywhere that does the breadth that we're trying to look at. We really want to cover services and goods and products as artisans. well as produce and artisans. Wonderful, thank you. Any other questions out there? Gemma has a question for us, just checking out your Facebook page. What interactions are you uncovering through this platform that you can transfer to the web page? We've just started um, Facebook page. We haven't launched the business. Actually, this course was a defining moment for it. We wanted to ch check uh, the financial viability of it uh, before we launched too far in. Um, uh, but definitely Facebook grouping is where we'd like to be able to foster a lot of the local contact. And we feel that people will be very much encouraged to do that. It, um, it should be quite easy. To be honest, we hadn't really thought about Facebook being the driver until we did the course. Yeah. So it's been yeah. really useful yeah. and we're kind of behind the curve on that. Yeah. Isabel has a question for you. What is your traction and do you have a, fun a functional product yet? Um, no, no, we don't have a functional product. And our traction has been mainly the interviews that we've done as a result of the course and talking to dozens of people, both on the consumer side and the, um, and the vendor side. We have learned the phrase dual facing marketplace. And yeah. thank you, right? And, and, um, and we only just came up with the idea before we had the opportunity to go on this course. So this isn't something that's been around us for very long. We just, this course just coincided with our idea and boof, here we are, bam. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And one final question, because I know you're passionate about this topic, is how do you define local? What makes oh. someone shopping local first? This was a really big, interesting Great. thing in the interview. We, when I was interviewing the customer, they said, yeah, we shop local. Uh, where do you shop? Coles. Um, and so we really needed to understand that it was shopping local for local. And part of our vision is that the customer will decide what shop local so you say i want to buy from somebody within 20 kilometers of me or i want to buy from someone in western australia and that's how your search results will be defined great thank you big round of applause to sally and robin excellent work now we're halfway through our pitches uh, um, this evening so one of the things that we obviously miss out when we do things online is that moments of collision where we interact and get to meet people we've never met before so what we like to do is we're going to be doing some mini breakout rooms if you haven't done these before what's going to happen is you're going to see a pop-up on your screen 
Um, the pop-up, I'm just going to invite you to join a breakout room. You're going to be transported magically to that room with about three or four other people. And when you're in that room, what I want you to do is just introduce yourself, your name, and then in the five or 10 minutes that we're going to have together, um, I just want you to share your, um, your thoughts or your experience uh, so far tonight. So what you thought about some of the businesses, what you really liked, what you thought could be improved. So in a moment, you will uh, get a notification. You're going to be in groups of about five or six or four or five. Um, so notifications going to appear any second now. You're going to have about 10 minutes max. So please take the moment. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had an opportunity to meet someone new um, or potentially even connect with an old friend or an old colleague. So thank you very much for, um, for doing that. I think it's a really nice um, thing about uh, Zoom calls that we can still find opportunities to connect even though we're not together. So thank you. So next up, we're gonna keep the pictures rolling. We've got three more pictures to go and then we're gonna hear from our judges uh, regarding uh, the two golden ticket opportunities. So next up, we have Dane from Tailored Electrical Contractors. So Dane joined the program uh, with already an established business. He was just looking to gain some new skills about expanding um, into new markets. So please welcome Dane. If it was dark, you'd turn on the light. But which light do you like? Up lights, down lights, chandeliers, or outdoor floodlights turning night into day. What about charging all of your devices? One of these USB power points takes care of that problem. Hi everyone, I'm Dane Taylor, founder of Taylor Electrical Contractors based in Willerton. We solve electrical issues. Do you need more power points? Need more light switches? What about just brightening up that lounge room? What about the electrical safety systems in your home? We only use high quality Australian made products where possible and we treat every installation as if it were being carried out in my own home. In only two years, we've built an exceptional reputation. This is thanks to the extreme power of social media and word of mouth recommendations. Through a detailed business plan and profit and loss statements, we have achieved sustainable growth. Business improvement techniques such as the ones we have learned through the City of Canning Sprint have meant we are looking forward to an expansion into the commercial sector. Through continued growth, we are looking to expand our workforce within the year. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, our own website, drop me an email or give me a call. So get in touch and we can discuss a project or the next improvement to your home. I'm Dane Taylor with Tailored Electrical Contractors. Thank you and good night. Well done, Dane. Big round of applause for Dane. Wow. Nice work. All right. Do we have any questions out there from our judges or from the audience? So Isabel has one for you, mate. So what is your plan to grow? So what what have you um, what have you developed over the program in terms of thinking about expanding into that commercial sector? So the expanding into the commercial sector will take place within coming months. Uh, I've made some good contacts through interviews I've conducted with through your techniques that you taught us through the program. Uh, made some good contacts through uh, word of mouth mainly. Um, I guess I got started with a maintenance company. Just they do mainly shop maintenance and new new shop fit outs. Um, did two small jobs for those, and they uh, quickly became clients of my own. Nice. And there's another question here from Gemma. Uh, what are your plans to source commercial projects? So you just mentioned word of mouth. Is, are there any other acquisition tactics you're looking to use to source commercial projects? I'm currently looking at the um, the tender processes. Um, yeah. Every council, I'd, I'd love to get on the on the, with the city of Can Canning. Um, they, I just missed out on their uh, tender process for the maintenance. Um, also looking into where my other contracts can help me out. Uh, I, I know some people who run some restaurants and things like that, and they're sort of looking out for me as well. Nice, thank you. And just one final question from Joy. I know you use Aussie products where possible, but do they keep up with international product development? 
So are they kind of world leading or are they world class? Uh, yeah, so they, they do keep up. They see a lot of, uh, a lot of products being used elsewhere, but there's very stringent uh, standards here in Australia. So they have to adapt to uh, our markets. Um, there are a lot, uh, a lot of things you can buy on eBay and through the internet and not compliant for use in Australia. So the Australian manufacturers are really striving hard to, to meet our tough standards. Nice. Thanks, Dan. And there's a couple of com comments here. One from Lisa. Love the business name, mate. And one from Annette as well. Great use of testimonials. So nice work, Dan. Round of applause. Awesome work, mate. Thank you. All right. So our second last pitch this yeah. evening is, is Olga from Thimble Studio. Studio Thimble. Hi, I'm Olga from Studio Symbol. I believe sewing is a lifelong skill useful for any household. Whether you want to make clothing for yourself, maybe your baby, or just perform simple alteration. How many of us had experience with online shopping before? Where you order one size and color and you get a totally different result in your parcel. Just as examples I'm showing on the screen. Even in a retail shop, it's hard sometimes to get what you really want. You like the dress and the color and the style, but the size doesn't fit, and vice versa. It could be a disaster sometimes. Would it be nice to expand variety of your wardrobe with the clothing you actually love wearing? When the color is right, the size does fit. Not only that, you would wear it with pride because you would make it yourself. I'm a mining engineer by my degree, but I'm a seamstress in my heart. Sewing has been my passion through all my life since age of about 13. I'm sure mining industry would survive without me, but I can't survive without my sewing machine. So a long time ago, I decided to leave my 9 to 5 job to follow my passion and to share it with the world so I can teach you how to sew and maybe uncover your hidden talents. Since opening my studio less than a year ago, I completed about 50 sewing workshops for beginners using only free social media and word of mouth as my advertising. I'm so glad to have returning and new sewing enthusiasts at my workshops. So, I would like to invite you to my new course of classes for sewing beginners where I will take you on a journey from zero experience to complete garment making process. I offer you a one-stop fully set up sewing studio with all required equipment. So you don't need to invest in expensive sewing machine to enroll into my course. All equipment will be provided. And after the course, you could make a decision about sewing machine purchase for yourself, but you will do it with more knowledge and less anxiety. Whether you wish to sew for fun or make clothes for your baby or for yourself, I would have a class for you. If I inspired you to learn a lifelong skill and start your journey to a handmade wardrobe, or you know someone would love to join my classes, please share this info with them. I would love to see more of you in my studio, to share my passion with you, and to make your dream wardrobe come true. Thank you for your time. And don't forget to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram at Studio Symbols. Well done, Olga. Nice work. All right. Okay. Hey. <laughs> well done. So uh, Amanda's got a question for you. What is the price point for your courses? And you know your profit margin. So <clears throat> at the moment, um, I run only like a one-off workshops. Uh, so not a structured course to enroll to, and the uh, average price of the um, everything included workshop where you come with nothing and you live with something made uh, was about uh, $80. And it's a different offers and everything always either use a first time offer or come with a friend's offer. So people always have a chance to buy it cheaper as a like kind of a, attract them as an entry point sort of to experience it and if they like it, then go further with me as well. So, and now I'm working on the actually set course where I found that the people, even though they love it so much and they said, I would definitely will come back, but then they run out of time or something always in the way they sort of not everyone's coming back. So 
I thought how to deal with this problem. I decided to actually uh, do the structured course where the people will enroll and commit to not one workshop, but like series of classes. And sort of I can also progress them through their skill levels as well. Thanks, Olga. Thanks for the response. Um, there's another question here. What is that, sorry, who is your target market and how do you find them? How do you how do you reach people to attend your classes? So I do have a sort of different niche market which I would like to uh, reach and approach. So I have a different classes for the different niches. So one of my interests is working with the first time moms and I have a series of classes now which I started to run So For Your Baby. This is the one direction and I use the social media posting in a different group, uh, word of mouth, um, invited the friends sort of who is expecting the baby sort of for testimonials as well, sort of that, that can be my sort of free advertising for the future as well. Uh, then I would like to work with um, active retirees who probably just change um, their lifestyle from like more active going to work to more free time for themselves and who still active and would like to experience different things. And for them, it probably would be not about sewing, but more about social interactions where they will come either with a friend or even just by themselves and meet someone at my classes. I enjoy a couple of hours of sewing and then a cup of tea at the end with some bikis. And the other group of uh, people I'm uh, creating a course for is just um, um, active, probably like a business owner's lady who doesn't work um, 40 hours a week who still can manage her time and uh, devote some times to sort of interesting things, to self-development, trying different things like art, um, pottery classes, sewing classes. And yeah, as well, sort of sewing would become, it's not as a target, but more like um, interesting time spending, fun time, and learn uh, valuable skills at the same time. Lovely, thank you very much. Let's give everyone, uh, everyone give Olga a round of applause. Thank nice you. work. Well done. All right. So we have our final pitch for this evening. Uh, our final pitch is Azada from uh, Wooden Forms. So please welcome Azada. This is Azada from Wood and Form Cabinets. We design and manufacture custom cabinets. What is the first thing that comes to your mind thinking about custom cabinets? For example, custom kitchen cabinets. You might think of this or this. Maybe this. But let me ask you some questions. What if you do 99% of cooking and preparation at home and need more of space? Not like this. What if you are into a healthy lifestyle and consume more vegetables and fruits and need a cool storage room? Not like this. What if you have a big family and like to use your kitchen as a social hub? But definitely not like this. What if you have a disabled family member who uses wheelchair? Lots of different needs to consider, right? Yes, we understand one design does not fit all. A good design should be based on each individual needs. You might say, I like the look of this in display kitchen. But think again, does it meet your needs when you bring it home and it looks like this? Why meeting your needs is so important? Let me explain. It is generally recognized that Australians spend 90% or more of their time indoors. So regardless of being at home, work or shops or any indoor places, you need a well-designed space because it has a significant impact on your health. During our eight years of operating in Perth, we helped senior residents with, with friendly, easy use kitchen design like this. We helped a disabled family member with easy access to cabinetry like this. We have a small house owner to have beautifully designed cabinets with effective storage solution like this. <laughs> Wood and 
form cabinets. We make gorgeous bespoke cabinetry to promote people's health and well-being based on their unique individual needs. Thanks for listening. Oh, wait, please don't leave. I forgot to introduce our team. Ellie? This is me. And Tayeba. Thanks for listening. No, this time is for real. Oh, seriously, I look forward to hearing from you. Bye. Big round of applause for Azada. <laughs> I know she was nervous about showing up. You did a wonderful job. Well done. Thank you. So, do we have any questions from our crowd? Waiting for some questions coming from our judges. So one from Rebecca Reeves, how do you position for the market as it a, what's your, um, what's your position in the market? Um, so what do you mean by position? Like, um, the, so you, do you go for premium or do you go for more general uh, consumer? Like who's your target market? I would say premium. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's like, um, yeah, it's more like, um, obviously a kitchen with no compromise and it's like more high end and, um, uh, yeah, just for a cabinet strip. And is it you built or retrofit? Um, yeah, it's new builds. Yeah, pretty much everything is uh, here. Like uh, we are building everything here in our workshop, and we design and we manufacture, we deliver and we stop. Yes. Nice. And Isabel has a question. What is your plans to grow? So how do you plan to expand the business? What's the next steps for Wooden Form? Um, definitely making awareness is um, something really important because I think like uh, when it comes to um, any interior design, people think, um, oh, yeah, they, they don't really consider it's really related to affecting the health and uh, making awareness and um, create some connection with like those people, designers who already um, have done some work um, towards this goal, uh, like you know, the people they design sustainable or biophilic design and this kind of um, goals they're looking, you know, they're moving forward. Um, yeah, that's the plan to make some connection, make awareness, and um, yeah, that's the next step. Nice, big round of applause for Azada. Thank you, Azada. Thanks. Well done, and a big another big round of applause for all of our pitch tonight. Pitches tonight, super super tough uh, to pitch even when it's remote and recorded. So big round of applause to everybody. You all did a fantastic job. And just personally, I just want to thank you all for your um, your support, your enthusiasm, um, and your passion over the program. It's been such a good opportunity to work with you all uh, over the last um, six weeks or so. And I really look forward to continuing that relationship moving forward. And I know the same can be said for the city of Canning um, and the Space Cube team as well. So we're not done just yet though. We still have a couple of formalities to finish. So judges, I'm gonna ask you to uh, finish up your rankings and your scores. Uh, Isabel, are you happy to be the, um, the, uh, yep. the informer of the, of the winners? Yes, now, while, while our judges are doing that, what I'd like you to do is you'll see in the chat that Holly has just posted a, a Google link. Um, I want you to click on that link. That's for a People's Choice Award. Um, so I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to click on that link in the chat. There's just one question there. It's going to ask you, who do you think should be our People's Choice winner? And while they're doing that, I'm um, going to ask the judges just to finish up their scoring if they haven't done already. Sorry, uh, Nate, I just made a mistake. <laughs> Can I do it again? Uh, the judging, the, um, the yeah. yeah. I don't think you can, but that's okay. 
okay. I don't think you can resubmit, unfortunately. Oh, okay. But I don't. I don't know if you, if you want to private message Holly what you put in and what you'd yeah, like to change yeah, it to. I'll she should that. be able to. Um, yeah. Sure. All right. Thumbs up if you've submitted your people's choice. Cool. All right, Isabel, do you have our winners? Is her Yes, I do. Okay. I'm just seeing some people are still. Still some coming through. Okay. So we did have a few competitors quite close. Um, but today we have one winner that is actually the same by the judges and the crowd. So I would like to congratulate Cynthia from Empower to Free. Woohoo! Well Thank you. Thank you for your participation and your pitch. And you will be pitching again very soon then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just Thank won you. a golden ticket uh, straight um, to pitch for your spot into the Plus 8 Accelerator program. And also an interview to get into the SBE um, Women Focus uh, also Accelerator program. So congratulate, mm -hmm. congratulations. Thank that is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to have a lot of people in your cohort supporting you and joining you. And can I also just say a massive congratulate you to all of you. I was just um, telling them in the, the breakout rooms that I was quite impressed with all the pitches and the high quality of the pitch. Usually, you know, Sprint being just an eight week program, um, you never really know how much time you guys would have to really structure your business, communicate it properly, understand your value proposition and still put a nice, a very nice pitch. So I was very impressed. So congratulate, congratulations everyone and Nate for leading this one. It's, it's amazing to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. And just before we finish up, oh, sorry, Isabel, what was that? I was just saying that Boris and Joy also Amazing, thank you. On, the, on that note, Joy's just gonna say just a few final words. So Joy, if I can ask you to come off mute for us. So Joy is the leader of the business development function at the City of Canning and the, um, the, the key supporter behind the City of Canning Class 8 Sprint. So thank you, Joy. Thanks for being a judge this evening. Um, I'll just hand it over to you. To you. Thanks, Nate. And I apologize everybody for not um, being able to put my video on. I've had a few technical issues tonight, um, <laughs> but it's been really great to be um, able to see all the pictures. Um, I mean, I've just got to echo Isabel's words, completely blown away, um, you guys. It's been great to be part of the online sessions over the last six weeks to see how you've gelled together as a cohort and how you support each other. And just really also want to thank um, Nate and Isabel, you know, Skills of the Modern Age and Space Cubed. Great job, guys, uh, you know, delivering this program online. We were all pretty unsure at the beginning on how it would go, but I think it's actually exceeded expectations. Um, certainly um, from the City of Canning's point of view, um, we're all absolutely delighted to um, have supported you all your businesses through this program and Boris and I are definitely looking forward to keeping in touch with you and don't be shy we're always here and we're here to support you so congratulations and um, keep going because we definitely want to see your company names in the future out there in big bright lights so thanks everybody and good night thanks Joy Thank you for everyone that's joined us this evening. If you're interested in exploring a business idea, please check out some of the programs that are on the City of Canning uh, Business Mentoring website. And also feel free to reach out to the Space Cube team as there's lots of opportunities um, there as well. So 
well done to all of our uh, founders. I know we're going to ca catch up in person in the next couple of weeks for a, for a cheeky drink or perhaps dinner. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, thank you for all the friends and family and supporters uh, and mentors who have joined this evening. Um, I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of your Thursday night and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thanks, Lawrence. You, Thanks, been everyone. Amazing. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See ya.